Hey, it's Clay, and I've got something new today, never before seen on my channel, and this is Counter-Strike Source. This game was probably my first love when it comes to shooters. Uh, it, oh my goodness gracious, it just captured my soul in a strange and peculiar way, but it was so, so good, and it, you know, the astounding thing is that it's, people still are playing, like, literally there are servers that I have been playing on off and on for like six or seven years, and I am not even that hardcore. Like, I wasn't even around when this game first came out. I mean, it's just appalling to think about the longevity that this game has had. Uh, and I kind of wanted to reflect a little bit on it, and I'm just going to go ahead and get the disclaimer out right now. This is going to be a uh, unabashed rant on how much how awesome this game is and how new games should learn from this game because Counter-Strike is so good. A uh, little bit nostalgic, a little bit glorified, uh, but overall it is so, so good. And I really think that modern FPSs uh, could do a little bit better job learning from it and some of its strengths. Uh, so first of all, the number one thing, and I don't think the number one reason why Counter-Strike has such a strong following is because it is uh, very rewarding. And I guess I want to kind of contrast that to something like Call of Duty, which is, uh, I, people have kind of termed it as noob-friendly, or uh, accessible, or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But it, it, they, it is very clear when you play these different games, like when you play Modern Warfare 3 versus if you go and play Counter-Strike, they are appealing to a very, very different crowd. I mean, like, Counter-Strike has been extremely successful in the competitive community, and I think that the primary reason is because it is it has such a high skill ceiling. I mean, take a weapon like the op. I mean, you can get so, so good with an op that you're almost unkillable, like untouchable. Uh, whereas, like, if you look at something like Call of Duty, like the skill ceiling, uh, it just is not as high. It's not the same. It does not work in the same way. And if you also contrast that, look at getting into Counter-Strike. If you, if you sit somebody down, put them a keyboard and mouse in front of them, and fire up Counter-Strike Source, stick them in a Dust 2 server, they're literally going to go 0 and 40. They will just die over and over again. Because it's this game is not friendly towards noobs. Now, part of that is because people have been playing the servers for, like, years and years and years. But And, you know, you get so good, and you learn the lines of sights, and you learn... The tactics and you learn the map rotation but I think that the point is still the same that this game does not cater to bad players in the same way that uh, Call of Duty does um, you know with death streaks and with perks and with all, all these other game mechanics built into the game a game like Call of Duty to help good players be successful right away but I think that that waters it down I think that cheapens it I don't think that is a good thing I don't think you should ever be rewarded for being bad. I don't think you should ever get a pat on the back for being a bad player. Now, I'm not opposed to, um, you know, helping encourage new players to play more. And I understand that, like, with a game like Counter-Strike, I'm sure there have been people who have decided to stop playing because the skill ceiling is so high and because it does take a lot to get into it. But... I think that that is such a beautiful part of why Counter-Strike has been so successful, and I think a part of why Call of Duty is floundering. Um, and I think that that is primarily because uh, a game like Counter-Strike, it rewards you for putting in time and effort and learning to be a better player. Uh, whereas a game like Call of Duty just kind of waters it down. Um, I also want to talk about like the strategy of, of Counter-Strike. I think... I think the mind games of Counter-Strike is such a cool part, and one another reason why, um, why it is uh, has become so popular. You know, so on Office you're playing hostage rescue, whereas on Dust Two you're playing you know boss. It's almost like a search and destroyer. You know, I just refer think of it as Counter-Strike style, but you know you only have one life, and when you die you don't respawn till the next round. So the way in which those mechanics work together to kind of funnel gameplay, I think, is genius. And I think that it it has allowed for such depth and strategy and tactics to arise. And, you know, one thing you, if you play Counter-Strike for a while, you kind of 
uh, get into a flow and you you have different strategies and tactics for different elements in the game. So take Office, for example. You know, at the beginning, you have different rush routes. You can be aggressive. You know, if you're playing the T side, you can rush back, you know, garage, or you can try to rush front stairs, or you can even rush front office, um, or you can decide to camp. You have all these initial strategies. And then you kind of get into the mid game where maybe half the team has died and your initial rush either succeeded or didn't. So you either stick with it or you fall back. You either push forward or you retreat. And then you kind of, you know, linger into this end game where there are few players left and maybe it trickles down to maybe like a three on three or like a four V two. And, you know, there's such depth, you know, to like, depending on, you know, are the hostages still there? Or has the bomb been, you know, set off yet? And so based on that, you have rotations and you have to move and you can guess like, well, if he grabbed the hostages, did he go garage or did he go stairs? You know, you have all these different layers and layers and layers on top of just the f- the simple fact that when you see a guy, you have to shoot him. Uh, there is so much depth to it. And I think that that is uh, that's such a such a cool part of it. Um, and also, I think that, you know, with a game mechanic like that, you know, it definitely, uh, again, that the game, the structure of the gameplay feeds into that, uh, what I said earlier about rewarding good players. Like I said, if you're a bad player and you die, you have to sit out the rest of the round. So there's literally a built-in incentive to be a good player because then you can actually play more. And I th- that's awesome. I think you should be rewarded for being a good player. Whereas, uh, you know, if your hand is being held and you're giving a little pat on the back, even though you're horrible, I mean, that makes no sense to me. That makes zero sense why you should be rewarded for being bad. But I guess we will see going forward with the uh, the new Counter-Strike Global Offensive coming out. I know it's still in beta form, and from what I've heard, it uh, has been kind of ha- received mixed reviews from the competitive community Um I'm not sure. I, I it's it's a Valve title, and I know it's a Counter Strike title, so they're definitely the competitive scene is going to be a high priority. Uh, so I'm really hoping that it can uh, kind of recapture some of that old flavor. But you know, it's crazy. I mean, even if I hop on a Counter Strike server today, you know, I'll deathmatch for a few rounds just to get the feel back, and then hop into a server, and you know, it just comes all flooding right back. It is still as fun as it was from day one, and. You know, even just, like, the mileage you can get out of a single map. Like, you know, for Call of Duty to release map after map after map after map after map. You know, there's hundreds of maps almost. And there's new map packs almost every, you know, four or five times a year. And But for Counter-Strike, literally, like, two or three maps have had, like, a seven or eight year, ten year, however long staying period. I mean, it's just mind-blowing to see the contrast there. And... The ways in which players learn these maps to such deep levels, and they learn, you know, head glitch spots, they learn lines of sights, they learn traffic patterns to such a deep level that, again, it just really raises that skill level. Uh, and I think that that is so cool. I think that is such a sweet element to it. And, you know, I'm not sure if anything like Counter-Strike will ever happen again. Uh, I think it's been, it's has, in some ways, it was kind of a unique thing at it hit the uh, the video game community at just the right time and the competitive scene at just the right time and it has kind of uh, captured captured all of that in just the right way to uh, really create a unique experience. But, uh, you know, if you guys have never played Counter-Strike before, uh, you've got to try it. You've got to give it a shot. Uh, I'm sure it's really cheap now. Um, and for new players, I would definitely recommend going to a deathmatch server uh, so there are continuous respawns and you can get a feel for the recoil and the guns and uh, the way that the guns work, because it really is, uh, you know, it takes getting some getting used to. It takes some practice. You can't just sit down and be good immediately. you got to learn the game, um, but I can promise you that it will pay off, and it will be worth it. But anyways, that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I hope to see you out on some servers soon. See ya.